That's really common. I mean, uh, people use, you know, comedy and that kind of lightheartedness, laughing, joking to cover up a lot of pain. I mean, you know, we use humor to cover up pain all the time. I mean, humor usually like really strikes us, I think, and hits home. Like the jokes are the best jokes when it talks when it reveals something about the pain that we experience yeah, because it's so relatable. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, there's a reason that they say that like most comedians are like super depressed and miserable Yeah, because that's their coping mechanism. And that's super, super common. It is actually really common, which is kind of sad. But the only reason why it's kind of sad is because people are not going to take you as seriously. And in treatment, I had to learn how to say the things that I needed to without mm. smiling or without laughing. Because if you, if you're smiling and laughing, people won't take you seriously at all. And mm-hmm. it's like, that's the only way that I knew how to ask for help mm-hmm. or tell someone how it was doing. Mm-hmm. It was very difficult to break that. Yeah. Even course. today, I still kind of do it because most people would be like, well, why do you do this? And I would always tell them, would you prefer that, I, my delivery was kind of a little bit more comical while being a little bit serious or very serious. Or would you prefer me to sit here bawling my eyes out, Mm -hmm. telling you how I feel? Yeah. Some people can't handle that. So it's like, and also too, you're coming to set and you're trying to like be positive and you're trying to, you know, be professional and do a good scene. I mean, you don't want to come to set and like be miserable. Yeah. Because the people don't want to work with you. That is true. You know? It started happening, though. It yeah. started happening where I was going to set. And I always like to be very professional, but there were, uh, I think, two key days where, uh, for the first time ever, people kind of started to see beyond, like, my exterior because that's when I started having meltdowns. I had two major meltdowns on two different sets, and that's when I was like— I need some help. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't know what I needed help for. I knew that I wasn't okay, Mm -hmm. but I didn't understand why until I went to treatment. Right. What's your relationship like with your parents now? Do you talk to them at all? If my dad were to die, I would spit on his coffin. So, so (laughs) so not good. (laughs) No, um, no, no. Uh, I, the last time I saw my father was on my 21st birthday. I'm about to be 26. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I tried talking to him about how I felt about my childhood and different things. And um, at first he really listened to me. He apologized. He, um, he, he felt guilty. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? He, um, he, I thought I was making some type of breakthrough Mm. and you know, this went home, talked to my mom about all this stuff. And then she got in his head. And after that, he was like, if you ever want to be a part of this family again, you are going to have to do it on our terms. You're going to have to work for it because you should never say things like that about me or your mother or yada, yada, yada. And I was like, you know what? I got to let this go. And I uh, stopped talking to my family. But even though I stopped talking to my family, the way that I was raised was that for some fucked up reason, I always wanted uh, their approval. So even after that, even after everything I had gone through, so, I still wanted it. Of course, but that's so normal. Every child wants their parents' approval. It doesn't matter how they treat you. Yeah, that is true. You know? It's still, from my perspective, it's still kind of sick, but... Of course, <laughs> of course, because, I mean, it sounds like your parents aren't aren't particularly well themselves. No, but it's like, me, personally speaking, like, I... Uh, I still wanted that, like, a uh, parental figure, you know, someone to go to, someone to be proud of me. You know, it's just like that bond. Yeah. But I had to, in treatment, uh, I remember the day oh, we had group therapy, and then they were talking about some topic, and I was just sitting there in my head, like, thinking about my own stuff. And um, I don't know what was said, but something just clicked inside of me. And in the middle of group therapy, I just had the biggest breakdown because in that moment, I realized that no matter how hard I tried or no matter what I did, I would never gain my parents' approval. And that's when I realized that I had to let them go. Like I Mm. could not have a relationship with them, not because of the approval aspect, but also because of the fact that they're sick in the head Mm. (laughs) and that's not healthy for me. So I realized I have to cut that off and I have to forgive them. 
Yeah. That's... I mean, I'd still st- spit on my father's grave. It's like, I, I forgive you, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be really, really hard. I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to have to cut ties with your family like that. It's, uh, Wait, you but- know, at first it was hard, but I, I actually started kind of like creating my own friend family. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. And while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.